we're gonna give them free eggs. And so they did for an entire year. Hey, this is Travis. Today, I wanna to talk about the massive breakthrough in BitTensor Yuma consensus and what it enables us to do. And I guarantee you, it's a lot more than you think. So let's review how BitTensor works. In BitTensor, miners do the work, validators check miners' work, subnets tell validators how to rank miners' work, and then above all those participants are the stakers. Stakers judge how good a subnet is doing and their subnet owner. So we've kind of got this hierarchy from miners, validators, subnet owners, and stakers. Now Yuma consensus is how validators come to consensus on how to evaluate miners' work. So subnet owners tell validators how to evaluate miners' work, and then Yuma consensus allows validators to come to agreement on how to rank miners' work. So the simplest way to put it is that validators all evaluate miners' work. And then we take those evaluations and we find the average of all the validators. And then validators are rewarded based on how close they got to the average of all validators' evaluations of miners. Now it's a bit deeper than this. I actually have an animated video where I go into it in more detail in the description. So Yuma consensus is this mechanism that ensures that validators will come to consensus about how each miner is meeting the incentive mechanism in each subnet. So it's really the glue that holds BitTensor together. Without consensus, validators wouldn't be able to agree on which miners are best. They would start trying to game the system and then BitTensor would fall apart. Now again, this is a fairly high level explanation of Yuma consensus. My animated video goes into more detail on how validators can't game the system under Yuma consensus. So you can say with Bitcoin, miners compete to solve the next block's hash. But with BitTensor, thanks to Yuma consensus, miners compete to solve a variety of problems like providing services or hardware or AI training, not just math problems, but problems with utility. Now, what I really wanna talk about in this video is what Yuma Consensus allows us to do. It enables us to measure, incentivize, and therefore organize human action in a decentralized manner, in a manner that is less corruptible. Now, a lot of BitTensor investors are hyped because they believe it will enable BitTensor to compete and beat centralized AI competitors. Now, this is true, but I think it's very narrow-sighted. Through Yuma consensus, BitTensor can solve a lot more than just AI problems. Again, Yuma consensus allows us to measure how good a miner is at meeting an incentive mechanism. And these incentive mechanisms can be anything. Now, the reason I say anything is because these incentive mechanisms are written in code and you can just have the code ask a human to do tasks. And as it becomes easier for technology to look at and evaluate the world through things like video cameras and microphones, we can start to incentivize real world actions. There's no technology limiting us from creating a BitTensor subnet to incentivize something like, say, road repair. What if decentralized permissionless miners competed to repair a road the quickest? Or what if you had a subnet in a brick and mortar shop that evaluated employees on how helpful they were to customers and maybe whether customers left with a smile on their face? But here's the big one, the one that I'm most excited about. We're very far away from it right now, but what if BitTensor could solve charity? Have you ever noticed how charities usually just suck? They always need a little bit more money for the next breakthrough. On one hand, there's like scammy charities that are just constantly trying to get you to give them money, but they don't actually produce anything. And then on the other hand are charities that want to produce something that have goodwill in their heart, but they end up doing something bad instead. And to illustrate this, there's a story of this church in the U.S. They wanted to do something good for the world. So they found a poor village in Africa somewhere. You know, they're very poor there. We're going to give them free eggs. And so they did. They bought the town free eggs for an entire year. And of course, the church felt good about itself. You know, they're helping solve problems for this very poor town in Africa. But doing charity properly is extremely hard. What ended up happening is things seemed fine for a year. And then the charity stopped giving the free eggs to the village. Now, there was actually an egg producer in the village, but they didn't buy his eggs for the full year. What they did is they bought eggs from a big town that was nearby and shipped them into that poorer town. And so what happened to the local egg farmer is he went out of business. You know, he had spent a lot of time and money to build up the infrastructure required to house the chickens and whatnot. And he just went out of business because 
because he couldn't compete with free. So that kind of looks bad. But then on a societal level, after that one year, now they didn't have access to local eggs anymore. So this act of charity was supposed to make things better. But in the long run, it ended up making things worse because it kind of crippled the local economy. So, yeah, that story just really shows how difficult it is to provide charity, even when your heart is in the right place. Now, again, have you ever noticed how government programs often suck? and how similar to these scammy charities, they just need a little bit more funding before actually providing what it is that you want them to provide. So you could give a bunch of money to bureaucrats and A, hope that they actually want to use the money for good, and then B, somehow magically also use the money for good. You know, given how hard charity is, it's not that easy to just have the money and solve the problem. Or you could give the money to a BitTensor subnet that measures and incentivizes the behaviors that you want. Now, of course, with BitTensor being permissionless, this allows for maximum human creativity as far as solving some of these extremely difficult problems like charity. So what if instead of being taxed, people could purchase alpha in the subnets that are actually doing what they want their tax dollars to do? Now, this is the core reason why I am so madly in love with BitTensor. It's the reason I started this channel. BitTensor has the ability to solve societal problems that have remained unsolved for millennia. And it can do this by using the Yuma consensus to evaluate and incentivize the human behaviors that we want. So the price of BitTensor Tau go up and down, whatever. Like I care about that, sure. But the reason I love BitTensor so much is because it's the next societal level breakthrough. And it's all facilitated by Yuma consensus. Now, I know I sound crazy here, but if you have any good arguments against what I'm saying, um, please put them in the comments. I would love to hear them.